Hola, Nels Klein here, and I am bored to death. Wait, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, this is bored to death. Earthquaker devices, colloquium, if you will, regarding pedals and pedal boards. And so I brought my New York pedal board, well, not, I have three. This is the big one, because we're talking about effects pedals. So why not bring tons of stuff? It's a split in half pedal board, so I can stack the uh, pieces in my trusty Pelican case and use the Pelican case as a sort of table for my elevated devices. And uh, I've brought my trusty 59 Jazzmaster to play some sounds through these pedals and this incredibly odd looking and I would say rather comely Earthquaker Devices amplifier. Pretty rock, wouldn't you say? Anyway, all right, let's start with a basic sound. Whoops, sorry, that's not a basic sound. Here's a basic sound. Let's quick loop, loop. Everywhere I go, I have fun. So what do we have here? We have a tuner. But before the tuner, I put an Earthquaker Devices Arpanoid, which isn't on my board. But really, it's not on my board because I lent it to this guy named Jack who never gave mine back, and I don't want to call him. But uh, I set it up on this random setting. Uh, that I like very much that I probably overused on a recording with Anthony Braxton a couple of years ago. It's really good with some delay on it, and it'll be really good if I loop it and change the speed, and here it is. So that was just some end of the world noise that, that I added with my Zvex Fuzz Factory with crazy custom paint and my vintage Digitech Whammy One, which is still my favorite Whammy pedal, not only because it's small and because it's red, but because it sounds great and it also has this one setting that all the other ones, well maybe the two has it, I don't know, I never owned a Whammy Two, but then they took off my favorite setting or one of them the major second, sort of like a B-bender sound. Let's turn off that delay. Which is really great for kind of like my bloody Valentine type stuff. So that's that. This is the 16 second digital delay from the 80s, early 80s, and a Chaos 2 that I keep using, mostly for fake tape delay. It does a great echoplex. I used to own an echoplex and use it all the time, so I know what I'm talking about. And then it's also got the space echo, the Roland space echo. Remind you of any 70s Herbie Hancock records? Does me. Anyway, okay. To continue, 
People make fun of my Boss CS3 compressor, but I've used these Boss compressors forever. I know what they do. I love them. I know they're not the best, but I also love that latch switch because I don't like to hear this sound because I often play at maybe 50 dB and not always 120. Uh, Henry Kaiser, he says he loves this sound. He loves hearing that sound. I hate it. So uh, there's my Boss compressor, which I use to boost my signal, sometimes just for looping. I do it for, to increase sustain and also for a timbral thing. For example, if I'm playing very twangy. <laughs> I forgot that I turned up so much reverb. Well, anyway, that was kind of good. And uh, a Boss, whatever this thing is called, volume pedal, FV, 500, 500 FV. It works and it's big and it doesn't break as often as all the other ones I used to use. And let's run that reverse because I like to do that all the time. And I'll take my whammy pedal and harmonize, maybe in fifths. Something to go along with that, with a little compressor added. I say I grew up with psychedelic rock. I'm 62 <laughs> years old. I was 13 in 1968. Well, anyway, to continue, overdrive. Here it is. Uh, I'm known for using the Klon Centaur. I love it. I have three of them. I always use it with Wilco. I have no room for it. This is New York. This is New York City. There's no room for a Klon. And then someone told me they're going for something like two or three thousand dollars now. Forget that. No way. Really? So I'm kind of really not that picky when it comes to this. And, and here's my Seymour Duncan 805, which I think is great. And it's just, you know. And I have to say, man, Seymour knows his stuff. His Duncan Antiquities, uh, which I've had to sometimes replace vintage Jazzmaster pickups. He knows what they're supposed to sound like. And he makes some good pedals. The pedals are super underrated. Somebody told me the 805 pedal is like a big pedal with metal guys. I find this surprising, but what the heck? Why not? It sounds great. Uh, love the old vintage Boss Vibrato pedal. I use it all the time. It pretty much is on every board I own. And it can get wild, especially going maybe an octave up on the old whammy pedal and put some fuzz factory on it. And why not some space echo? sci-fi and really fun but you can get these sort of really like slowed down it's almost like a rotating speaker sound needs a little reverb context reverb in this case made by red panda perhaps the most handsome pedal ever created visually Let's loop that. 
Let's put some compression on it so it's louder and loop it, a little delay. you can drop things into this loop non-destructively. Sorry. Change the octave. see that my stuff's kind of getting kind of worn out from constant use, so sorry about the noise. Things do wear out. Uh, what's left on here? Oh, the sodomizer made by Davy Ever, which um, is an excellent fuzz box in its own right. <laughs> kind of an octave fuzz, I guess, but I love the chaos switch. for the entire family. Clean Boost, it's made by uh, Crazy Tube Circuits in Athens, Greece. It's a very good clean boost and it has a little EQ to it too. But what's, there's really nothing exciting about a clean boost, but here it is. Did you hear it? Got louder, but I can really thin it out too if I want. Very 60s. Lots of fun for playing a, a solo and you step out. And if I'm playing a Telecaster or something, I can really thin it out because I'm usually trying to defeat treble, but I can get a little twang and pretend that I'm Clarence White for at least the 30 seconds it takes to be delusional and then wake up and realize I'm not Clarence White and never will be. So here's a, a jam pedal, also made in Athens, Greece, coincidentally, uh, Waterfall, which I use quite a lot with Wilco, uh, and sometimes in my own music for a fake rotating speaker sound. But it has lots of other fun, wacky stuff. I gave one of these to John Modeski. He was really liked it. He uses it on Wurlitzer electric piano. That's his favorite sound. And Jan 
Kanos, the man who makes these, put what he calls the Nell switch on it because I kept saying it doesn't go fast enough. So now it goes really fast. <laughs> this loop worthy. Whoops. Oh well, missed again. And uh, subtler effects are also achievable. Chorus. <laughs> it's the 80s again. I never use that sound. So, Pulsar made by Electro Harmonics. They just keep coming up with more and more cool stuff. But this is one of a uh, version of one of their oldest pedals, the Pulsar. It's every kind of decent sounding tremolo in one pedal. It's incredible. And they're in completely affordable. Hey, let's combine that with some Arpanoid. So I just added that uh, into my count to five pedal here, and let's see how it comes back. Pretty cool. Let's speed it up. Let's run it backwards. Let's run that into the 16 second and then do something else with the count to five. to do with the old whammy pedal in the major second setting I showed you is put it right in between is a minor second and uh, put the, the old rough edged bottleneck to the guitar how about a little fast DD3 my reliable old boss DD3 which I haven't showed you yet but now I am
Right with Fuzz Factory. This count to five does some other fun stuff where you can actually layer what you're putting into it rather simply. But you never know what's gonna come back pitch-wise. At least I don't. recital. <laughs> <laughs>